There are times in a man's career when you get to speak to a genius, and I think I'm speaking to one of them. Arthur Smith, how are you? Well, genius, goodness me, that's a big build-up. It's a long way to go down from there. All right, let's say comic genius. That's not quite as good as a proper genius. <laughs> well, all right, yes, I am. You're right, I'm a genius. I'm not just a comic genius. I'm a poetic genius and, <laughs> uh, and, and, an, and an artistic genius. That's a whole side of my work you haven't seen yet. And more importantly, a grumpy genius. Well, I'm good at being grumpy, it's true, uh, and I can just instantly almost switch into grumpy mode at any moment. Uh, look at you grinning there with your miserable young man's fresh face. <laughs> you see, uh, yes, grumpy old men has undoubtedly been something that um, has, uh, as they say in the PR business, raised my profile. <laughs> Not that I particularly want it raised too high, you know. I, I turned down um, as much work as possible. Uh, well, I'm lucky to be in a position to be offered to be on uh, afternoon TV in a short segment. But, uh, I, you know, I turn a lot of stuff down. I've turned down all reality shows so far, and I'm wondering, maybe I should do one, I don't know. It just seems such an awful thing to do. Why would any human being want to do it, really? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to turn them down. That was the end of that musing. How did I slip through the net that you agreed to do this? Yeah, <laughs> How did you, wait, hang on, which net did you slip through? <laughs> which net are we talking about? of the many that you appear to have slipped through in your life, Alex. No, yeah, no. Well, of course, I'm doing this to publicise a raft of uh, shows I'm doing around the country. Unfortunately, I'm not very good at plugging. I now realise I've forgotten the list of where they are. Well, perhaps you can stick that in at the end. Yeah, we'll do that for you. I mean, there's nothing more grim, presumably, than touring theatres up and down the UK, is there? Oh, no, I don't agree. Well, there is, if that's all you ever do, I agree. But I'm... Uh, oh, I'm doing it in some style. Um... I'm, you know, I'm not doing, I'm not like doing seven, 25 gigs one after the other, going from Bournemouth to Aberdeen to Belfast to Lowestoft, you know, in that order. I remember doing that sort of thing where you, you wake up with a hangover, not that I do anymore, but you, you, I used to wake up with a hangover and think, right, I'm in Cardiff. Where's tonight's gig? Let's have a look. Ah, uh, yes. Dover, you know, or, or and then the one after, in, oh yeah, no, but I, I know I'm doing it in some style, they're kind of one off dates, and I'm trying to tie them in wherever possible. They're mostly nice places, so that I'm gonna find out about the places a bit and then maybe explore them and go off and do a bit of walking, you know, like for example, I'm doing the Buxton Opera House, I believe, at some point. and I'm tying that in with a nice weekend walking in the in the Peak District, and uh. And I'm not, I'm not messing around staying at the youth hostel or, hitch, <laughs> or, or, or sitting in the back of some grim van afterwards. I'm going to either stay in a hotel or be taken home in a, in a padded helicopter with a couple of dancing girls in the back. Is the Arthur Smith show a bit like a, a Broadway spectacular? I mean, do you have dancing <laughs> girls and do you have big scenery and sets? Well, you, I, I suspect there's an air of sarcasm in your voice, but you <laughs> never know. You never know. These shows are called An Audience with Arthur Smith and in, in the first half I should be pontificating about uh, my life, career, and the world, um, heavily peppered with gags, I hope. And in the second half, I'm doing a, a question and answer thing. But who's to say? You know, sometimes I do. I do sometimes have dancing girls come on, and maybe I will. You know, if I feel if I meet some dancing girls on the train up, because I actually I usually get the train. Uh, I should get them in the show. So, you know, uh, I usually, when I arrive at these venues, the, the sort of uh, stage manager bloke says, uh, so what, what are your requirements, Arthur? And usually, technically, my requirements aren't much. But I always say, yeah, well, uh, you know, you got my uh, letter about the roof opening up and the lasers and the stairs that light <laughs> up and the chorus of 200 girls as I come on, did you? And even stage managers get that joke and say, oh, oh yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know you're funny then? Because that's what amazes me about comedians. You're going to put a show on. You're kind of obliged to be funny, aren't you? Yes, well, that's your job, isn't it? And if you're putting a show on and people are paying for you to be funny, you better be so. You know, I've spent the last 20 years on and off standing on stages. You get to know you get to know what an audience will like not always of course you can you know no one's guaranteed and you get to do some bad gigs but the thing is about comedy unlike other performing arts is that you get an instant response so if it's funny people laugh 
if it isn't, they don't, you know. Or at least you could do something that was amusing, that would be sort of small smiles. But as a comedian, you want a great big laugh lifting off the roof if you can. Did you ever come to a conclusion who's the funniest comedian and what is the funniest joke? <laughs> yeah. Well, the funniest comedian, uh, what, ever in the world, ever? You know, Aristophanes was supposed to be pretty good, but I never saw his acts. Uh, I think Richard Pryor in his early days was a truly uh, wondrous creation of sort of free-thinking, rolling, kind of brilliant ideas and acting them out. And he was doing it in a way that hadn't been done before I would say probably he would be a candidate for the greatest ever comedian uh, and as for the other question pleasingly since I've reached my 50s I've forgotten what it was <laughs> 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 who's the greatest living comedian today then I mean there's there's two kind of ends of the, the spectrum I saw Russell Brand's new DVD at Christmas then there's people like Ken Dodd who do 16 hours non-stop is there a, anybody who's brilliant at the moment or can you not say because comedy is down to the person who's receiving it well I'm happy I, it's a, I don't like people being coy as they were I couldn't say any names I'll give you some names of people I think are brilliant I think Stuart Lee is a comedian who does really interesting and funny stuff back again um, but there, there's so much comic activity now and of course so many different channels through which you can disseminate it it's not just like doing live gigs as it was a hundred years ago then there was telly there's radio there's the, and the internet has opened up a whole huge range of uh, ways that you can disseminate comedy <laughs> It's peculiar, the shadow that you cast. And I think you'll be remembered for being grumpy now, because that seems to be the thing that everybody talks about when you mention your name. Well, yeah, at the moment, but who knows? In, in, in 50 years' time, I doubt I'll be remembered at all. But if I were, it, it would uh, maybe it would be that, or maybe it would be something you don't even know about, or I don't. Who knows? Grumpy old man is undoubtedly something that has... Um, people come up to me quite often about that which of course in a way being something of a grumpy old man that is a bit of a pain <laughs> you know people so you're even say, getting grumpy about being grumpy now yeah well I'm not alone <laughs> in this I mean uh, yes alright I won't say anymore um, <laughs> you know Will Self I know I mean he always just tells me to F off every time he sees me and I agree and I do <laughs> and he is a man I imagine he must sort of virtually be shooting people coming up to him yeah because they always say yeah you know I'm grumpy too and, you know they say well if you're really grumpy why don't you sod off and leave me alone <laughs> <laughs> but no yeah, I understand that fair enough people want to say hello but particularly with that program it would seem uh, but no that program is, is, it was wonderfully edited and because often you find, if you look at grumpy old men, often the people on it are not really saying anything particularly funny. They're just going, oh, it's terrible or something. And and it's edited in such a way that the, the grammar of the editing is that somehow you get a real sense of these people. And even those things are funny. The things that aren't on paper anyway, funny. Are you still nervous about the thought of doing it? Or is it just a walk in the park now, going on stage and talking about the things that are on your mind? No, it's never a walk in the park, really. Unless I do do a show which is a walk in the park, which I have done, may I say. <laughs> I do these outdoor shows, and that's a walk in the park, although quite terrifying too. Um, no, well, for these ones, I'm doing a whole evening, and I've, so I've got to be pretty on the ball. And I, I'm, I don't really get nervous much anymore. But that's not to say I'm not a bit apprehensive or, you know, in the period just before I go on, I'm, you know, sort of quite intense and unapproachable for several minutes even. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, I, I kind of think nervousness sometimes is a form of vanity, really, as though anyone cares how well you do or not. In the end, who gives a toss? Is there any risk now of you being booed off? I kind of feel now, with because of this celebrity culture we live in, everybody's seen you on the telly, so they're going to give you a chance anyway. Is there any possibility that you could fail now as a comedian, or do you know too much and have you been doing it too long? Oh, God, no, I could fail desperately. I mean, you know, there's, I could fail at any moment. Uh, that it's, uh, you know, you're only really as funny as your last gig, in a sense. As soon as I lost it or got all my jokes wrong or did a load of rubbish material, words would get round, don't worry. As for what I'd be booed off, that's another step. Uh, 
I don't know if I've actually been booed off. I mean, I've been heckled, jeered, spat at. You no, know, well, if I'm booed off, so be it. It's depressing. But you have to put up with a couple of uh, things like that. If if it's happening every time, then I'm giving up and going back into landscape gardening. Are you happy with the heckles? Are you one of those comedians that will afford them so you can pull out one of those Bob Monkhouse crackers and hit them back <laughs> with it? Oh, yeah. I mean... Uh, I, I, a lot of comedians, I mean, I think a good comedian should, if not welcome heckles, certainly sometimes relish it a bit and it can undoubtedly lead to some really funny and entertaining exchanges. Generally speaking, you should be able to get the better of a heckler because A, you're sober, B, you've got a microphone, C, the audience have come to see you and not them, and D, you're supposed to be funnier than them because you're a semi-professional comedian. So you should be able to get... It's when they just keep relentlessly going, get up, get up. I mean, then, <laughs> you know, if there's no... Then it's, I'm sorry, we'll have to get security. And do you still enjoy it as much as you did 10 years ago, 20 years ago? Not that I'm suggesting you're old, by the way. <laughs> no, please do. <laughs> I do, I do enjoy it. I mean, when, when you first start, the you're intoxicated by your ability to make a whole room laugh. And that is a very exciting feeling. And it remains exciting. Although, you know, when it's, when it's happened a, a quite a few times, it's not quite the same. Some people I know, there are a lot of comedians who just get off on it so much that that's all they really ever want to do is be on stage which is why Ken Dodd for example you know goes on and on literally you know he both uh, you know on a large scale and a short scale he you know his shows famously never really end and he, he usually have to someone has to drag him out of the car park at 3am and he's still going away I mean this to me is a man who's most happy in performance and I, I, I wouldn't say that because I, I want to have a, a life outside. But standing on a stage in front of a room full of people making them laugh is a, is a pretty damn 